It is the 20th of the 6th, 2012, and this is today's climate change update. SOT.net Double sunspot flare which flattened Earth's magnetic field leads to aurora borealis spotted over the United States as far south as Nebraska and Iowa. The sun is entering an unusual heavy period of solar activity and the poor planet Earth is being the, bearing the brunt of it. Uh, lucky for us Earthlings, any disturb disturbances we experienced from the latest outbursts were simply extraordinar extraordinarily display of aurora borealis or the northern lights. Uh, this is coming off of a sunspot 1504. Uh, just goes to show how weak our magnetosphere has become. Uh, where not so major CMEs are setting off auroras as far south as Iowa and Nebraska. Heavy rains cause major flooding, sinkholes in eastern Minnesota. Uh, Duluth Mayor Don Ness says he plans to declare a state of emergency because of serious flooding in his northeastern Minnesota city. Apparently they got over 8 inches of rain in 24 hours. Uh, got so bad the flooding um, where they've got actual news footage from the local news of uh, the sewer systems backing up and the roads flooding and sinkholes and that kind of thing but also a zoo uh, was completely inundated and apparently some of the animals got out of their their containments uh, but did not escape the zoo grounds their secondary fence system kind of thing and even reports of a missing polar bear uh, but apparently that was due to uh, all the power was out down there and it was dark and they were waiting for light uh, so it be a little more safer for them to round everybody up. Long Grumbling Alaska Volcano has explosive ash burst. Um, here we go with Cleveland again. Uh, remote Aleutian Volcano has been restless for the past year, rumbled to life on Tuesday, shooting a thin cloud of ash several miles into the sky, which could pose a slight ha hazard to aircraft, Alaskan scientist says. Uh, Cleveland's been popping off pretty good for quite a while. Uh, aftershocks after rare Melbourne earthquake. Up to 60 aftershocks have been felt across Victoria and Melbourne following the last night's 5.3 magnitude earthquake. The quake j struck just before 9 p.m. Uh, with the epicenter between Tralagun and Mo in the state southeast. Uh, the shaking lasted around 30 seconds but could be felt from uh, Gippsland to the metropolitan Melbourne and as far south as Swan Hill in the state's southwest. So some rocking and rolling. Um, the quake was one of the largest in Victoria since 1982 and the state's third, third largest in a hundred years. Uh, more on the surprise auroras. Mysterious yellow haze shrouds central China. A strange yellow haze shrouded cities in central China residents from uh, Henan and uh, several provinces are wary of the haze, which some experts describe as harmful. Now, the Chinese government came out and said this was burning of hay, uh, but it persists and continues, so who knows what's really going on over there. Uh, 6.0 earthquake in the Aleutian Islands off Alaska. And torrential downpours forecast as new severe weather warning issued for uh, Somerset, um, United Kingdom. Sunny and warm weather may have returned to Somerset this week, but it's not going to last. The Met Office has just issued another severe warning, weather warning for the country as uh, torrential rain is forecast to hit the region Thursday morning. So buckle up. Another 5.0 earthquake off the coast of Oregon. Uh, right on the plate boundary there. And that's about all I want to cover on there today. A couple stories on the watchers I want to care cover. Japan on the path of two powerful typhoons. Uh, it's the first time since 2004 that a typhoon has made landfall in J June in Japan as tropical storm uh, Guchol weakens over Japan. Another tropical storm which, which makes which make a major impact over the island later in the week. Uh, Guchol continues to bring gusty winds and heavy rains to the island of Honshu. So far the storm has brought typhoon force gust winds and several inches of rain in the Tokyo area. And uh, of course that made landfall on Tuesday. Here's one for you. Freak phenomenon floods ancient Indian temple. Giant sea waves more than 12 feet high 
hit the northern side of a famous shore temple um, in India, southern India, on Tuesday evening, June 19th, leaving the Heritage Monument three feet deep in water. The temple is located 60 kilometers um, from Chennai. Seawater uh, gushed inland for about 75 meters, leaving behind a pool of water. Um, wow, and this all happened when the town was under protest. Uh, apparently the government's trying to take over the rights to this temple, and so all the shops in town shut down in protest of this fact, and that's why there weren't any injuries or anything when this big freak wave came in and, and uh, inundated the town. Um, yes, yeah, crazy things going on. Very interesting read. And that's about all I want to cover there tonight. Over to the RSOE, they got a bunch of stuff going on. Big fire in Colorado, Fort Collins, uh, Paradise Park area. Um, still raging. Same one in the state of New Mexico in the Gala National Forest. Um, they're saying the conditions are going to be going on for a few more weeks. Uh, no letdown. Uh, got a major oil pipeline burst in Canada. It'll be the third one this year in the province of Alberta near the uh, Innis Fail. They're saying it's not leaking into any um, water sources. A um, couple 300,000 liters, uh, give or take. They haven't announced the, the official numbers, and I doubt if they ever will. Got a nuclear event in the state of Pennsylvania, the Berwick. Uh, Susquehanna nuclear power plant. Uh, they had to shut down reactor number three. They just fired it up after 69 days down uh, doing maintenance on the turbines and stuff. Apparently they found a leak in one of the containment areas, uh, but the entire leak was contained in one of the reservoirs that they set up for this kind of thing. Uh, so they went ahead and shut the nuclear reactor down again, and um, they're going to have to do repairs before that fires back up again. Uh, of course, the storm in Japan... Uh, Sequoia, Sequoia National Park in California, major fire going on there, and North Carolina, uh, the, the Croatan National Forest, uh, that fire has grown slightly, they said they have over 100 firefighters and a couple of helicopters dumping water on this thing, uh, and the conditions are set for further fires out of North Carolina as well. So uh, the house is definitely burning. Uh, let's go ahead and go over to the nuclear stuff. Uh, E&E News, uh, NHK, TEPCO fails to reveal what caused so much radioactive material to be released. Amount of radioactivity released is still unknown. Still no investigation into what caused the meltdowns. And it's been 16, almost 17 months now. Why hasn't there been an investigation? Because they can't get close enough. Uh, again, Japan braces for another storm. Typhoon uh, Guchal has already made ground vulnerable. Torrential rain up to 15 inches. Government warns of landslides and floods. And not to mention all the radioactivity that gets stirred up during this with the winds and stuff. Fuel particles themselves may have been blown away. During unit number three explosion, alpha particles splatter faster than sonic speed. You got to remember this was the MOX fuel uh, reactor that had the big explosion with the plutonium uh, based fuel. Very dangerous, uh, very controversial, and of course they're not telling us what's really going on with that. Uh, Oima, they must have filmed Fukushima Daiichi from mountaintops with telegraphic lens. More than one footage of explosions of units 2, 3, and 4 must exist. I think there was a local camera cameraman who had a media contract, and uh, we'll probably never see those either. Farmer, Fukushima police filmed the explosion of unit number one from helicopter above my land. They warned, quote, the government is hiding the information. You should leave. French government questions if Fukushima workers suffer acute radiation syndrome. Take TEPCO's denials with great caution. AKA, they're lying their asses off. Local official publicizes post alluding to possible additional explosions and or incidents at Fukushima Daiichi between March 15th to 21st last year. Uh, that would not surprise me one little bit. Zealite makes 
may make sense for people in the Cascades, northwestern United States, exposed after Fu uh, Fukushima, but be careful. Uh, this is a Gunderson video. Arnie's now coming out uh, and not pulling his punches so hard. He's basically uh, letting the cat out of the bag. Local official, visible hot mass floated in the air and fell for hours after Reactor 3 exploded. Top secret images, quote unquote, of black smoke falling. Diluted version may have reached Tokyo. Now this is the MOX plutonium fuel that exploded in number three reactor. Arnie Gunderson again, people on the U.S. West Coast should have used iodine pills to protect from Fukushima radiation after 311. Uh, thanks Arnie for stepping up so much later, you know, hindsight. Report, unburned MOX fuel containing plutonium was in mushroom-like cloud, mushroom-like cloud, of black smoke when reactor number three exploded. And uh, Northeast Japan bracing for 180 kilometer, mile an, uh, mile an, kilometer an hour typhoon. City of North of Fukushima evacuated. Coastal area sank due to 311 quake up to 16 inches of rainforest. And uh, yeah, we're just watching films where the tide comes in and actually inundates these cities now uh, because, the, again, the island's sliding into the Pacific ever so slowly. And good bet all tuna, bluefin tuna in the Pacific are contaminated. Of course, we've been going on and on about the radioactivity in the Pacific Ocean and the sad death uh, that we all bear witness to. Okay, over to Daily News. Uh, they got a few things on Fukushima Diary. Delayed disclosure at Oi Plant. Now, this is the new uh, the reactors that they're they're fighting to restart, and they the Prime Minister said yes, we're going to restart this in a week or two. Apparently, they are gearing the number three reactor up, and they had a water alarm, a low level water alarm, go off on one of their tanks, and uh, they failed to uh, let the local officials know until like seven days later. So we're already off to a good start with the Ojai plant, and you got to remember all these safety measures that they promised um, to upheld, they have several years to achieve, so they've done nothing to improve the safety to start these reactors up. Reactor number four has been proven to be built right on top, literally on top of the fault line, and uh, the insanity continues. Gas coming up from reactor number two, they have some photographs of that, and you got to remember um, this is the reactor with the increased uh, hydrogen levels um, that they've been going on for the last few weeks. Um, we can actually physically see it in the films and the photographs coming out of the building reactor number two. Death rate of heart disease in Fukushima became the highest in Japan. Uh, they're calling it stress and whatnot, but the same thing happened after Chernobyl. Uh, heart disease went through the roof and these people are suffering uh, from radiation sickness, whether or not their government wants to admit it or not. It's not cost effective. Uh, and it goes on and on. Radiation level picking up in Typhoon. Um, and they actually got some charts on this one where they can show the actual, when, when the Typhoon rolled through, the radiation levels spiked in prefectures all across Japan. So this radioactive typhoon is ongoing and all that soupy mess is right off the coast. Where do you think these hurricane slash typhoon slash cyclones get their moisture from? And they wring it out on those mountains and dump it down on the land, into the rivers and back to the ocean. It's a vicious cycle. Finally tonight, we're going to go to uh, EXSKF. I'm just going to do one story. Iwaki City's Water Department campaign Let's drink the city's tap water. <laughs> I'm pretty sure, you can't make this up, I'm pretty sure the city's water department does this every year, as most people do. Um, Iwaki City of Fukushima Prefecture says it selected a drawing by a fourth grader for its Tap Water Week campaign. It has been made into postcards to be distributed at the city's public facilities, municipal government branches, public libraries, community halls, and tourist and cultural facilities. They would be given to all elementary school children in the Iwaki City to come home and read to their parents. 
At the top of the card it says, from the water department of Awookie City, let's drink tap water. In recent years, the mineral water and PET bottles have been popular. But tap water is, is gently gentle on the environment, safe and secure, and delicious water in the Awookie blessed with nature. Water that you can enjoy right now from the tap. Let's drink in big gulps. Oh my god. Enjoy while you can, everybody. Thanks.